Hello, welcome back to Rogue Startups. I'm your host, Craig Hewitt, and today we're talking all about LinkedIn, your favorite topic and the thing that we have been talking about for the last few episodes of this show and will continue to talk about for the next few episodes of this show because I feel that it is the place to be these days if you are serious about growing kind of the reach of yourself and your brand and your company and your customer base using social media. Uh, and so I think, first of all, let's just kind of qualify this is a promotional tactic, right? Nobody is building their entire business on LinkedIn. Nobody that listens to this show probably is building their entire business on LinkedIn. We're not talking to a bunch of LinkedIn influencers about how to sell content on how to grow your audience on LinkedIn, right? This is a tool just like many other tools in the sales and marketing world. It is a tool to further our businesses, right? So we are bootstrapped or mostly bootstrapped founders of SaaS, productized services, agencies. LinkedIn is just another way to get your message out, have it resonate with your ideal customer persona and get them to buy your stuff, right? Get them to come into your world and love you and what you do and identify with kind of your vibe and then buy your stuff, right? That's that's marketing, right? That's sales and marketing. And it turns out LinkedIn is a really, really great channel or avenue to do this in. So we've had a couple of people on the show talking about LinkedIn ads, talking about LinkedIn organic content. We have several more coming, talking about video, talking about selling, talking about the DM strategy, which I'll go into in a minute. But I wanted to take this kind of interlude to talk about how I'm doing it because I probably am like a lot of you where I'm not perfect. I don't know what the fuck I'm doing most of the time, right? But I've picked up little bits from a lot of the folks that we're chatting with uh, and have tried to implement as many of them as I can, knowing that like I'm not perfect. I don't know everything. Uh, I have a strategy and approach and a framework that is sustainable for me, first of all, because I think that's really important is like, hey, can, can I do this day and day out, month after month, week after week? Um, is getting some results, which is always good, right? So we're not just wasting time and money. Uh, and I feel good about it, right? I think that's the other thing is there's a lot of ways to get clients. Uh, some of them you're not so happy to tell grandma about, right? And so this one I feel really good and wholesome, if you will, uh, from a customer acquisition approach methodology and kind of ethics perspective. You know when you find that perfect partner for your business, the, the person you say, shit, where has this person been all of my life? I found that a few years ago with Clearly Design and Francois, who has helped us design almost the entire Castos web application, mobile app, WordPress plugin, and marketing site. You know, I think that, you know, the old saying that software is eating the world, I think it's never been more true, right? Software and AI are getting easier and easier and easier to build and cheaper and faster. And so what's differentiating you from all of your competition is how much your customers love using your software. It's not good enough anymore to just have good software people have to absolutely love it. And to do that, unless you're a designer, which I'm not, you need someone who gets this stuff and is able to take the stuff that's in your brain as a founder and put it into Figma and put it into specifications for your dev team to implement. And it's really been transformative for us to work with Francois and Clearly Design on, on Castos and really on every aspect of Castos from, from branding to, to marketing to product uh, and to promotion. I can't recommend it enough. He's a really great human being, a really great service, and Francois is running a special just for Rogue Startup listeners right now. If you go to clearly.design, you can get a discount off of his monthly uh, design as a service subscription. Tell him that we sent you, and I hope that you enjoy. I know you won't be disappointed. Francois is absolutely amazing, and Clearly Design is our chosen partner for everything design, UX, and product at Castos. So uh, I think first of all, why LinkedIn, right? For me, why LinkedIn? Um, I think you need a social platform to grow your reach, right? Things like content marketing and email especially are great to nurture existing people in your world. But if the goal is just to build a bigger world, a bigger sphere of influence, if you will, then to me, social media is the answer in some way. So you just got to decide like what's for you. And it may be that Twitter is better for you. It may be that Instagram is better for you. It may be that YouTube is better for you. And I'll put an asterisk there, right? Because YouTube is a bit of a hybrid crossover, right? It is a content platform and it is a social platform. So like 
more on YouTube in the future probably, but um, but but we'll just kind of discard YouTube because it's not a pure social platform for now. So for me, LinkedIn is where it's at because it has my clients, right? And so I'm talking about both clients from my coaching business where I coach founders on how to grow their businesses better and faster and more sanely and Forecastos where we sell enterprise podcasting solutions to companies. So both of these are on LinkedIn. So for me, I like that I can get a two for one on a platform. And I talked with the guest of the previous episode, Sam Brown, about this. And, and he said every one of his clients, so he works you know, with clients on how to grow their LinkedIn kind of audience and influence, every single person struggles with this. And I'm sure you do too, right? You're like, hey, I run a business, but like I'm a person. I want to talk about like me and my stuff. And I think that's the, the place where I'll talk about what I'm doing specifically. Um, I like... Castos and I like growing Castos and I like getting customers there, but I also really, really, really just like talking about business and helping founders. And so I've just come to peace with like, hey, my kind of world is split, right? If you go on my LinkedIn profile, you'll see I'm a Gemini. You'll see both sides of me, right? You'll see the Casto side and you'll see the founder coaching side. And, and like, I'm just not willing to go and kind of give up this platform for one or the other of them because they're both really important to me. And I think both are are beneficial to each other, right? Because like the coaching business gives me some credibility as the founder of Castos and being the founder of Castos gives me some credibility as a founder coach because I've done this and we're at millions of dollars of ARR. So, so like, I think it's not wrong to have several things that you talk about on a channel uh, or, or an avenue like LinkedIn. Now, yeah, if you're kind of whole hog entirely lined up on one thing, are you going to do better? Probably. Is that realistic for most of us? Probably not. So I gave myself the grace and I'm giving you the grace. Like, hey, if you don't want to go all in on one thing on your LinkedIn profile and channel, like totally cool. Just split it up and know that like, hey, you're going to get diluted a little bit. And the results that you will see may not be as good or big or fast as if you were kind of all in on one thing. Uh, I, the other reason I really like LinkedIn is there's a whole lot of data that LinkedIn is where the money is, right? The average income of a user on LinkedIn is, you know, triple what it is on most other social platforms. Uh, and it is just where we talk about business. So like, I don't feel bad spouting off about business on LinkedIn because it's what people expect when they go there. Whereas on my Twitter, I could be talking about, you know, the great, you know, falafel place down the street or the vacation I just went on, or I'm in New York where I get a bagel, whatever. Um, but I could also talk about business and sometimes it's weird and all like there's just these kind of conflated or, or confusing themes to people's profiles on LinkedIn, like it's business. And I talk about business. I love talking about business. I don't feel bad about it there. So that's why I choose LinkedIn as my kind of primary social channel these days. Let's talk about the, the kind of nuts and bolts of it. To me, there's three things, three, four, three or four things to an effective LinkedIn strategy talked a little bit about each of them with Sam Brown in the previous episode. We'll talk about each of them in depth in future episodes. But first, let's talk about organic content. Um, and by, this is no by no means an exhaustive list, right? But this is kind of like what's sustainable for me and what I do as of today. I'd love to hear from you in the comments below if you're watching on YouTube. What are you doing that's different for me? Um, so we can all kind of learn and level up together. But for me, there's a few parts to it. One is posting organic content. The other is sending connection requests and having DM conversations with people. The other is comment on other people's content to get my self and my message and my kind of ethos out into the world. And the other is kind of cold prospecting. So, um, so the first posting I post almost every day. I like to post every day if I can. A lot of it are reruns and clips and mentions of this podcast, right? I use LinkedIn largely to promote my most important content medium, which is this podcast, because I'm 320 episodes into it. It's by far like the biggest body of work I've ever had. And I love it, right? I love recording these episodes and chatting with y'all. Um, and so for me, as a piece of thought leadership, this is really rich information. Uh, and so I don't want to like recreate the wheel and like record a podcast episode and then like write a whole bunch of content too. I'll just take what I did in the podcast episode and post it on LinkedIn to convey kind of who I am, right? So much of my organic content these days is uh, clips from the podcast. I use a tool called Opus, opus.pro to automatically kind of ingest my YouTube videos. It cuts them up into a bunch of like 30 to 60 second clips. I go into AI, so I go in and you know clean up the bits that are wrong. And I have several of those to post throughout the next week. So this episode comes out on Wednesday. So I'll have a Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Monday, maybe uh, post to go out. 
I don't post on the weekends. I just don't, I just can't, right? It's just too much. Like I can't, I can't create that much. I have in the past posted several times a day for, you know, 14 times a week or whatever. Um, and it's just, it's not sustainable to me. So post every day during the week, if you can, I like to use clips from this show and the YouTube video. Um, if you have a YouTube channel, that's not a podcast, that's great. Do the same thing. If you're writing an email newsletter, you know, and this is all Justin Welsh's like content OS approach, right? It's like have a cornerstone piece of content that you then repurpose and redistribute in different ways and at different times across your, all your channels. So social, email, website, YouTube, podcast, right? That's just, we call it the media machine. Um, so that's what I do. This is the cornerstone piece of content I do. And then I repurpose this into several different posts. If I don't have enough or I want to, I'll create some plain text uh, posts and I post those just talking about sales and marketing and SaaS and growth and stuff like that. Uh, okay, so the next part is honestly just something I'm getting into, but um, I really like the approach and so I wanna share kind of what I'm doing. So um, the other way to grow on LinkedIn for me is to just kind of grow the number of connections I have and the number of people that see my stuff because I think this is one of the things about if I compare with Twitter is like, I can't kind of, or I haven't at least, actively gone out and like connected with people. Um, LinkedIn is a much more intentional thing, right? Like I can follow someone on Twitter, but it's not the same kind of mechanism where they have to accept it as on LinkedIn. So I have kind of automated ways to connect with my ICP, right? So my ICP is just for instance, let's say, sales leaders at companies with more than 5,000 employees who've raised a series B round, just for instance, right? So I'll get that list from something like Apollo or Sales Navigator, and then I'll use that list in one of a bajillion <laughs> LinkedIn uh, automation tools. And you read LinkedIn in terms of service and some of this is against their terms of service. You might get banned, blah, 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 whatever. You <laughs> fair warning, right? But what you wanna do, whether you do this automatically uh, and, and it's an automated kind of workflow or you do this manually is like figure out who you want to have conversations with and reach out to those folks. I'm engaging with their content. I'm liking it. Uh, I mainly go in and send comments to their content. If they're publishing new stuff, I'm sending personalized connection requests. Uh, and then I'm sending like in mails, which is like a, a DM, if you will, that goes to email for people that you're not connected with in LinkedIn. So if you're connected with someone, you can send them a DM and it pops up in the little thing in the bottom right. If you're not connected with people, most of the time you can't send them a DM and you send them what's called an in-mail, which is like an email, but inside LinkedIn. So however you approach this, whether you automate it and there's a bajillion tools out there to do it, or if you do it manually, you just got a big old list and every day you go through and send 20 messages you want to be intentional about who you're connecting with, right? And I view the content that I create as just support for this because what do you do when you go check someone on LinkedIn? Like you view their profile and that's the next thing I'll talk about, but you view their profile and then you view their posts. And if their last post was nine months ago talking about a new role they started, you're like, I don't really have much to like get on with, <laughs> you know, about this person. But if their post was yesterday talking about sales stuff and you're a salesperson, you're like, cool, let's, let's, talk about sales stuff. This is great. We have a lot to, a lot of rapport potential. So most of my content is to support my outreach efforts, which the goal of all of those is to get into a conversation. So this is where we get into the DMs, right? So everyone says the magic happens in the DMs. Largely, you're not allowed in the DMs unless you're connected with someone. So the content supports the connection requests, which supports the D, which then kind of enables the DMs. So uh, in the DMs, the strategy will depend on kind of what you're there for, right? What are you on LinkedIn for? Uh, for me, let's just say it's selling more Casto stuff. I'll ask my ICP kind of about the problems that they're having and, and kind of like I want to get at how we can solve this problem for them, right? Um, so I kind of think of it as like you're an attorney, right? And so they have all these lines of questions. The attorney knows what the person's going to say every step along the way, right? <laughs> and, and, and I... I want to think that I do, right? So I get into a conversation with someone, I'm genuinely very interested in what's going on in their world and what they're doing and problems they're facing and stuff like that. But what I really want is an opportunity for them to say, you know, I got this freaking problem. And my problem is that my sales reps don't know what the hell is going on across the organization. And I go, man, sounds like your sales team needs an internal company podcast. 
because that would solve like all this huge knowledge gap and siloing problem for you, right? That's like what I'm trying to get at. So all of this is leading to that opportunity. And so social media and LinkedIn in this example is teeing up the opportunity to have a sales conversation with someone in a warm kind of way so that we can get them on a call. Okay, and the last way I use LinkedIn and that I really like is commenting. So if I've got 15 minutes, I'll go and comment on as many people's posts as I can in my LinkedIn feed. Uh, commenting is a really great way, again, to kind of um, spread the exposure of you, you and your message to, to your audience, right? So people post stuff, right? Your ICP posts stuff or people that you want to be associated with post stuff on LinkedIn. You go and put an interesting and thoughtful comment in there. People see that, they see your kind of byline, right? So like your your name, your image, and then like the first few words of your byline. So it might be, you know, founder, coach, or founder of Castos. We help podcasters grow their brands, right? Whatever it is, right? People see that in the comments. In the comments, and the comment should be like insightful and helpful and genuine, right? And it's an opportunity for you to share, again, something that you know, something that you believe, something that could help the, po the original poster and everyone else who's reading, you know, the comments there uh, about the topic. So I really like commenting. Um, it's a great way to increase your reach. You know, I was chatting with a social media expert a while back and, and they suggested at kind of my level, I think I have like 3000 followers on LinkedIn, not, not very many, right? That I should be posting like 30% of the time and commenting 70% if I was taking like audience growth on here really seriously. Uh, I probably don't do that. I probably spend maybe 50% because um, even with like creating this podcast, repurposing the content, posting it, creating text versions of it and all that kind of crap, like that's several hours. And then I'll spend a couple hours a week maybe um, commenting on other people's stuff and connecting and doing DMs. So um those are kind of the handful of things right so commenting dms connection requests some of that's automated creating organic content uh and then for the dms and the connection requests like having a defined list based on your icp and like who you want to be in your world um just being intentional about that right because i think the the cool thing about linkedin and maybe it's the same for every social platform and i'm just taking it seriously here is you can be really intentional about who you're connecting with so I view it very differently as I do Twitter, which is the only other social platform I'm active on, is like I post and kind of just get whatever I get. <laughs> you know, there's no like, I want to go be friends with this person over here. I'm going to go kind of, you know, send them a connection request like that. That just doesn't exist. Like I can go comment on their stuff and we can get into a dialogue that that's definitely there and that's it. But I don't know, LinkedIn seems a little more, I'll say organized and and intentional to me. Um, the, the last thing is, and you, you, you might agree and you might not agree with this, like Twitter as the other option for most of us probably uh, as founders is, is cool. I find the conversations there arguably much more interesting. You know, LinkedIn today is still a little kind of sterile, but I see Twitter as a pretty volatile place to be building your playground, right? So um, fair warning, right? For, for those of you on Twitter, like I see a lot about like, shadow banning and reach way down and all this kind of stuff. I don't know, right? But like, I kind of see the bet of building a social audience on LinkedIn as a little safer than Twitter these days, right? And this is June, 2024. So that's it. That's how I'm thinking about and I'm actively using LinkedIn. This is not like philosophical ideal world. This is like how I'm using it. So if you've listened to the last couple of episodes, you'll know like, what the ideal state might be based on like some really amazing guests looking forward the next few weeks will be all about linkedin with with really amazing thought leaders and people who absolutely are experts in this space so i wanted to have this kind of in the middle here to say this is the reality right and your reality probably is kind of similar to mine where like it's not perfect right <laughs> it's not a fine-tuned machine it's not creating exponential results but, but I will say like I've 100% gotten customers for Castos and I've gotten customers for my coaching business directly from LinkedIn. And so 100% works. So um, I just wanted to share what I'm doing. I would love to hear how it's wrong or how you're doing things differently that you think are working really well. Drop a comment in below if you're watching on YouTube. Uh, if you are listening, shoot us a message, podcast at Rogue Startups. I would love to hear from you and just hear how you're viewing and using LinkedIn as a B2B kind of growth channel for you and your business. 
Until next time.